All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Mind Show Publishers, where we live that passive income life one idea at a time. Thank you for joining us today. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, hopefully you're going to find out some new things that can help you start your own business, um, that can help you start a new side hustle. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, our goal is to help you with that so you can get on the path of financial independence. Um, this particular series we're talking about right now is how to start a business. If you haven't checked out that first video, please go back and take a look at it. That first video is the first step in this process of starting a business. And it was about idea creation. So basically, how do you come up with a good idea to start your business? This video gets into the second step and it's about business plans. So let's jump into this video. <laughs> guys so we're getting into video number two of the start your business series for this particular video we're going to talk about business plans that is step two in the process and a business plan is very important because if you're trying to get venture capitalists if you're trying to get money from uh, SBA loans uh, banks different things like that they're going to require you to have a business plan and even if you didn't have an official business plan the things that you have to put in a business plan is what they're going to ask you when you go and get this loan. So it's better off have a business plan. So in the business plan, I think there are seven critical steps that you need to have in there to make sure your business plan is flushed out and as thorough as it can be. The first section is the business plan is the executive summary. Now, even though it's the first section, I think it's the section that you should leave for the last piece. And the reason that I say this is because with an executive summary, you're given a high level overview of your company, as well as, you know, the structure, the location, uh, products that you're going to uh, have in your business. You're summarizing it all in there, but it's in a quick, concise summary. And the reason I say leave it for last is because once you go through all the other steps, you're going to have a better idea of what you can say in your executive summary. An easy way to understand what you should have in your executive summary is think Shark Tank. If you've ever watched the show Shark Tank, where you have different entrepreneurs and people who have started their own business like you, they go out and they basically do a pitch to all of the sharks to try to obtain venture capitalist money. They're trying to get someone to buy into their particular business and as you can see it's very quick when they go out there to explain what their business is and they talk about all of the different things on what their business is and what they're trying to pitch that small segment that's what your executive summary is so think shark tank when you do this section but make sure it's the last section that you do all right so the second item on your business plan is the company description on the company description. You talk about the structure of your business and some of the products and services that you have. So number one, what type of structure is your business? Is it a sole proprietorship? Is it, um, a S corp? Is it a partnership, a single member LLC? You're going to have to explain about that in your actual section. If you've already gotten your articles of organization, talk about where your location is, where you got that set up. Was it on the West coast? Was it in California, South Carolina, Georgia? Where is your structure and where is your physical location? Now, if you have a home-based business, that's fine. It doesn't matter when it comes with a business plan. They just want to know. You can just say my location is in um, New York city. Uh, we are a home based business, but everything that we do is online, whatever that structure is. Now to make this simple, I'm going to pick a food truck as the type of business that we want to start up. So I may say, well, I'm located in, um, South Carolina. I have an Italian ice food truck. Um, it's a single member LLC is just myself. I do have, uh, helpers that come out occasionally, uh, depending on where we're at, 
Uh, if we're doing a big venue, I'll have two other partners that help me solicit people to come to my truck, you know, so you're going into the description in that particular section about your company. Okay, so the third section is products and services. And in this section, you get into detail about your particular product. So like I said, we're talking about a food truck. I'm saying Italian ice food truck. So in this section, I may say, I have an Italian uh, ice uh, food truck. We have 50 different flavors. That's one of our niches is that we have more flavors than any other Italian ice uh, food truck that's in the area. We target all of the different uh, occasions that happen in our area. So if there's parties that are going on, if there are parades, if there are holidays where specific things are being done, we try to cater to those, you know, conventions and things like that. We're always present in those particular times. The summertime is our best time, of course, but we continue to service with other products during the off seasons. You know, so that's what you want to explain about in the products and services area. Also, if there's any type of patents or copyrights or things that you've obtained to make your business stand out more, you want to talk about it in there. So you get into detail in the products and services area. Um, like I mentioned about if with Italian ice, the summertime is your best time. Does that mean when you get into the winter months that you're not going to be able to have certain things? You want to talk about what you're going to do in those off seasonal times. Maybe you flip over to something else. Maybe you start doing hot chocolate, you know, or coffee or, you know, things like that, that you switch to that particular uh, point, or you figured out a way to make your Italian ice into something that people uh, want to have during the cold months. It's just like people have an iced coffee, that type thing. So maybe you figured out something special that you can do with your truck during those particular times. That's the section you talk about all of that in the products and services section. Okay. So the next section is very, very important. It's the market analysis section and the market analysis is the area that you could mess up if you don't have all of the information that you need. The market analysis section talks about your competition. And I know some people are going to say, Hey, I came up with this great product. We don't have competition. Well, let's think about it from the perspective of a food truck. Let's say your food truck is going to be the first and only food truck in your area. So you're like, well, I don't have any uh, competition. There's no other food trucks here. No, there may not be other food trucks, but there's fast food restaurants. There's sit down restaurants. There's all types of things that you could be competing with. Even from the mall, they have the food court in there. You're competing with all of that. So for the market analysis, you need to be able to explain why your food truck is going to make people want to come to your food truck versus going to their favorite restaurant or their favorite fast food uh, area. And then kind of look at the point of looking at the dollars to say, well, how much money can I end up uh, bringing in by pulling these people away from these fast food restaurants and sit down restaurants, your convenience that you want to talk about if it's a food truck, your convenience is that you can go to the areas uh, that the restaurants can't go to. It's not like a restaurant can just pick itself up and move. So that's one of the convenient factors that you have. But with doing that, how can you make your market analysis look better in the numbers for the people and customers that you can get? So you may say, well, every Saturday I visit a different subdivision, you know, with my product, I know that, uh, we have 10 subdivisions that have tons of kids in it. I go there on the weekend with my Italian ice food truck and I service those different areas. So I'm booked all day, Saturday and Sunday. Cause on Sunday, I go around to the different churches when they get really let out. I'm right there. I've made a deal with the different churches that I'm able to just come up to their area and they let me park it there. And I have a calendar on Monday. Oh, well, I say Mondays on uh, this first Sunday, I go to the West side. Second Sunday, I go to the East side, you know, so I, you put those things like that. You have to show how you're going to make yourself stand out versus any other food trucks or the competition of 
fast food restaurants and sit down restaurants. So that's what, that's what you put in the market analysis section, but you got to be very thorough to make sure you have this right. Because the thing about it is if you have it wrong with your market analysis, the only person that's getting hurt is you. And if you are using this to get, uh, finances from a venture capitalist or a bank, whether your business succeeds or not, you're still going to have to pay that money back. So you want to do your research as thorough as you can to make sure you're making the right decision. Okay. So number five in this uh, business plan is your strategy. You know, how are you going to set your business up and how are you going to implement the ideas that you put in place? So we talked a little bit about your strategy when I was talking about the market analysis, but Another piece uh, that you have to look at is the advertising. How are people going to find out about your business? Are you going to do ads on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Craigslist? You know, where are you going to put information so people know what you're doing? Now, a big thing is with our example, if we're doing a food truck, you may want to uh, go to the city offices, find out about all of the events that's going to happen throughout the year, because whether it's hot or cold, summertime, wintertime, there's always conventions that are going on. There's always huge meetings going on in your city or town. You may have sporting events uh, from little league to professional. All of these things could uh, drum up business for you. You know, you got to have the proper licenses and things like that to do that. But that could be part of your strategy that you kick that stuff off and you advertise around that. You know, you let people know, hey, we'll come to your parties. You know, we got Italian ice. Would you like to have a food truck at your party? Oh, you're having this type of event. Oh, you're doing a family reunion. Oh, you're doing this, a class reunion. There are so many places that you could present your food truck uh, with. So that should be part of your strategy and implementation, but that's what you want to talk about in that particular section. How are you going to get it out about your business and how are you going to secure some of these deals that may be out there that you can profit from? So the next section is dealing with your organizational structure and your team. So your org chart, and you may say, well, I'm a single member LLC. I'm done with that section. But there are other things you can put in that particular section. Do you have attorneys that you've worked with? Maybe you had contracts drawn up uh, because you do business with different people and you do want to have contracts and things that are put in place, especially if you're talking about working with the city or trying to get on at certain events, you know, sporting events, whether they're little league or, you know, um, uh, AAU league, whatever it may be, or it's professional events. There are contracts that should be signed so you can make sure that you've secured these particular deals. So are you working with attorneys? Uh, do you have CPAs that you're working with? I want it to just be you. You know, it's, it, I know people think, Hey, it's a one man show. I'm a single member LLC, but there are other people that you work with. Um, if you have insurance on your business, make sure you have that stuff listed in that, uh, that section. So attorneys, CPAs, uh, insurance agents, anybody that you're working with, uh, even if it's a one off type basis, if they served a major piece in your business to get you where you are now, you want to make sure you put that in that particular section. Okay. So the final section are your financial projections. And this is going to be most important to your venture capitalists, as well as if you're trying to secure a loan with, um, SBA or, uh, banks, whoever it may be, this is the most important section. And this is the hardest section from, for some people, because you're basically forecasting on what you think you're going to get in. But if you did your market analysis, right, you can go from that point. And let's say your market analysis says that, um, we have, um, people going out to eat, uh, let's say we got a hundred people and of those hundred people, 40% of them are going out to eat every night. And that may be how you look at your particular numbers, because some people have, they struggle with how do I determine what type of business I can and can't get. And I always say, go towards the lower end on things, uh, when you're looking at numbers. So let's say we have a food truck. 
you know that if you're able to secure your food truck at a particular event for something like Italian ice, if it's summertime, you are going to get business and it's not hard to make Italian ice. You got crushed ice and you're putting different flavors on it. It's very simple, but people make pretty decent money off of it for a side hustle. Now, let's say that that is your business. So when you do your financial projections, you need to take everything that it takes to start this business. So make a list and we're going to say the food truck. If you don't have a truck, you got to put the money down that it costs to get the truck. When you look at the truck, you're going to have maintenance that's around the truck. Whether something goes wrong or not, there's still routine maintenance that has to be done. You got to get gas for the truck. Then you think about all of the utensils and tools and things that you need on the food truck to make sure that you have everything you need. You got to put that on there. Once you get all of that particular stuff, you want to think about um, the insurance. You know, you need uh, probably general liability insurance. You're probably going to need insurance around if something happens and uh, somebody could possibly steal your truck. Whatever that is, you got to have the proper insurance. You're going to have to get licenses around uh, being able to sell food. Uh, the other type of insurance you want to think about is, I know you don't think about anyone getting sick, you know, off of your Italian ice or whatever it is that you have, but that's a possibility. So you want to make sure you're covered from that particular uh, perspective. All of that, that's just dealing with the truck. Then you got to think about if you are setting yourself up as an LLC, you got your articles of organization that you have to do. Uh, there is a charge for that. You go to your secretary of state to get that established. Make sure you check to see if there's any other type of licenses that you may, uh, that you may need to do. Then you got sales and use tax. Uh, if you're selling a product, you're going to have to charge tax on it. Some areas, um, food tax is a lot less than other areas, but there is tax that you have to do. So you want to make sure you get all that, all of that stuff costs. Then if you're thinking about, well, I think I need to make me a website. You can get free websites, but if you want it to look professional, there may be a template that you have to buy to make that website look professional advertising. You're going to have to advertise. There's a lot of way of getting free advertisement, but that may not be enough. So there may be advertising fees. If you're getting contracts uh, drawn up, you're going to have um, a charge from your attorney to draw up those contracts. So the financial projections is how much is it going to cost for all of that? And then if you are borrowing money, let's say you need $50,000 to do this uh, food truck. And I'm just randomly throwing out numbers. Uh, and that would include buying the food truck, everything that you need. If you borrow $50,000 to take care of all of those particular items, then you got to uh, what you're going to charge for your Italian ice. How long is it going to take you? to break even so that you start making a profit on your Italian ice business. So how long is it going to take you to make $50,000? That's basically what it is. Cause you got to pay this money back and there is going to be interest on that. So the faster you pay it back, the less amount of interest that's going to be charged. And even on uh, business loans, sometimes the, um, if you get a small business loan, the insurance, um, not insurance, the interest, is a lot better than a regular, you know, tight loan that you would be getting. But those are things that you have to look at because if you borrow money, all they want to know is how fast am I going to get my money back? People don't want to wait five, six, seven years to get their money back. They want their money back in the first two to three years. And usually on businesses, you may not be profitable in your first year. So when you're doing this business, think of the simplest way that you can come in, uh, meaning the less expensive way. So you got to, you, you want to get a truck, but you don't want to go get a brand new truck. If you don't have to, you know, you can get a used, you know, truck, uh, that may be a difference of $5,000, you know, for you, you don't want to skip when it comes down to insurance and attorneys and different things like that, because it's cheaper to get an attorney when you don't need one versus when you do need one. So you want to make sure you're doing the proper things, but that's what goes on in your financial projections. How much is it going to cost you to get into the business? How much is it going to cost to, uh, start making a profit 
When can you pay these people back? So let's go over all the different steps one more time. First thing is the executive summary. I told you, wait until you do all the other sections. Then you come back and you do the executive summary. And that, that is basically your shark tank pitch. That's when it, that's what's in that section. The next section is your company description. So being very detailed uh, about your company, uh, talk about the products, uh, talk about your structure. That's what you do in that section. Section three, you talk about your products and services. What are you offering? What makes you different from any other food truck that may be out there or fast food restaurant or sit down restaurant? That's section three. Section four is your market analysis. Who's your competition? Why are you better than them? What can you do that they are not doing? You know, how fast can you actually begin to make money with that competition out there? So do your, uh, do your due diligence and understand how much is this business really needed? You know, is it a seasonal business? Is it a year round business? That's what your market analysis, uh, should actually tell you. And five strategy and implementation. What is your strategy uh, for this business and how are you going to implement it? You know, is there certain marketing plans that you're going to use to make you stand out from someone else? Are you going to implement it uh, during the summer where you're going to have your best business? What is that strategy? How are you going to do that? Six is your organization and your management team. Even if you're a single member LLC, there are always other people that help you in the process. You may have a CPA that does uh, your taxes for you, making sure that you're getting the lowest tax that you can, you know, making sure that you're writing off the proper things. You know, you can write off your truck, you can write off the maintenance, you can write off the gas. If you have your a uh, kid working with you in the business, you can pay your kid, you know, there's different things that you can actually do in that process. So that's what you want to talk about in your org structure and your management team. And then you get down to your financial uh, plan and your forecast. That is where you talk about how much money you need and how long is it going to take you to pay that money back if you borrowed it from a venture capitalist or you borrowed it from the bank. So hopefully this video helped you out. Um, the main thing is there are different formats for business plans. You just want to make sure that if you were on the opposite end and somebody was pitching this to you and you're looking at their business plan, does it tell you everything that you need to know about the business? And the biggest thing is you want to know, can this business be successful and when can they start making a profit? That's what a business plan tells you. How much money over time is it going to take to start this business up, to maintain this business, and then to start making a profit? That's what a business plan helps you do. So I hope this video helped you out. Tune in for the next video in the series. I won't tell you what it is. You just got to tune in to see. But thank you for joining my show publishers. If this helped you out or gave you some information that you didn't already have, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell button so you know when the next video comes out. And please, please, please continue on your hustle. All of us can get to financial independence one side hustle at a time. So thank you for joining Mancho Public. <laughs> yeah, yeah.